Hey guys, my name is Alan Chacon. I'm currently in Mumbai, India in one of the biggest slums in the world called Dharavi. So today I'm gonna walk around, show you what this experience is all about, show you some of the problems it faces, and hopefully change your perception on what this place actually is. Dharavi is the backdrop to the famous movie Slumdog Millionaire. It is Asia's largest slum, estimated to have between 500,000 and 1 million residents living in just 2.1 square kilometers of land, making it one of the most densely populated areas on earth. One of the biggest issues in Dharavi is sanitation. That is bathroom, that is washrooms, and sometimes there's public ones, sometimes there's not. Sometimes you're walking through the streets here and you see the water just kind of flow and uh, yeah, that's not clean water. The issue with such close quarter living is sanitation. Unlike most cities with underground sewage systems, Dottavi has most of its sewage and open drainage above the ground next to the main sidewalks and pathways. Some water is also acquired in a creek next to the slum that is actually the runoff from the city's main sewage line. All right, I'm about to walk into a public urinal. Uh, this, there's no real smell to it. It's pretty dried out, but um, not too bad. I'm surprised. Toilets are said the average one per 500 people and personally I had trouble finding a working public toilet in the area. This is why Dadavi has suffered in the past from epidemics and disasters like the plague of 1896 that killed half the population and is why typhoid and dysentery is so prevalent. So as you walk through the alleys and you see these homes you see sometimes two people sometimes you see ten people in these very small rooms. They're cooking food, they're just living life. So some of these spaces are very, very cramped. However, today, walking through the area, you'll see residents always cleaning, using strong chemicals to sanitize. And personally, I was surprised at how clean and fresh it all was, especially inside the homes that in cases you'll find five to 10 people living in one small room. If there's one thing I can relate to here, it's this, it's drying your clothes on your motorcycle. I have done this so many times around the world. So I get what this is all about here. Despite its pitfalls, rent in Dadaby can be as low as four US dollars per month, and most residents have access to electricity, gas for cooking, water, and for many, they even have small televisions with cable. To save more money, people have even gotten brave and creative enough that you'll see lots of illegal connections and theft of water, electricity, and gas in the area. Also, the government has invested a lot of money in here, they say, but the people locally that I've spoken to say they haven't seen a single dime for the improvement of infrastructure, of services, or anything else. The government has vowed to improve conditions and infrastructure with millions of rupees over the years. But to this day, many claim the money and projects have been lost, fallen to corruption, or never even started. Dadavi was founded in 1884 during the British colonial era and grew due to work in factories, leather, textiles, pottery, and in modern times, recycling, all done within the slum area, which today is estimated to generate over 600 million US dollars in business every year. It doesn't feel dangerous at all. It doesn't feel like my life is in danger. It doesn't feel like there's a huge crime ring going on. People are just living their life. Curious to see a foreigner holding a camera and talking to it. So far, the vibe here is very positive. Walking through the alleys and talking with the locals here, I found them to be very friendly, hospitable. Some welcomed me into their homes, and I was even offered chai and delightful conversations everywhere I went. I didn't feel unsafe at any moment during my time here. From filming with an expensive camera, having my pockets open, or even when there were massive crowds surrounding me, touching me all over. Professional tours of Dharavi just don't give the authentic experience. It'll be an adventure that you have to obtain on your own, but it will be the most humbling and perhaps life-changing moment you'll have in India. All right, guys, that was the experience. That is Dharavi. So everybody say bye-bye, see you tomorrow. Bye. All I can say is wow, I flew the drone and all the kids were so excited and so interested in what the drone was. And again, I had my GoPro, I had my wallet, I had all my pockets open and no danger at all. People just so friendly here and they're just so happy to see uh, somebody else that's not from here show up and see their home. That is, that is sanitary. My filming, I accidentally stepped on this hose here and uh, this whole thing just exploded on me. So this is a very delicate subject, right? So if you're ever here, do yourself and everyone else a favor and just don't stick your camera or your head in the people's homes. It's very invasive and it's not exactly good traveling etiquette. So ask a local first, ask permission to take a picture, because uh, again, you are going in their home. This is their life. Be very culturally sensitive if you want to do something like this. It's a positive experience and it's really humbling to come in here and see just how people are living because uh, not all of us have it that great. But these kids make the most of every situation. 
it's really humbling uh, to remember where you come from and to appreciate those around you and make sure we try to help those around us as well.